Hi everyone, welcome and thank you for listening to this afternoon talk. I will be speaking about syphilis and why we shouldn't forget about the old foe in modern medicine. Syphilis is a chronic systemic infection caused by Spirochet treponema pallidum. It's uh, of a particular concern in pregnancy due to the risk of transplacental infection of the fetus. Congenital infection is associated with several outcomes, including perinatal death. The World Health Organization estimates around 11 million uh, case, new cases globally among adults and 1.5 million pregnant women. It's, uh, it remains an important public health problem in many lower income uh, countries where it is endemic. It also a public health problem in several high income countries where it has re-emerged, re particularly in high risk groups. Congenital syphilis uh, complicates 1 million pregnancy uh, per year worldwide. Maternal acquisition of uh, syphilis infection is through sexual or horizontal transmission. It requires exposure to open lesions where treponema are present. The spirochete pass, pass to intact mucus or abraded skin into the host. The incubation is around 10 to 90 days. The risk factors include HIV infection and other SCIs as comorbidities, poor economic social um, uh, status, uh, multiple partners, and the use of illicit drugs. Clinical manifestations of syphilis are not affected by the pregnancy status. The diagnosis is made by serologic testing. Because methods that, are, that detect organisms directly are not generally available, Serologic testing comprises um, triponemal and non-triponemal tests. The triponemal tests include the TPHAs, as, as we are familiar with, as uh, known as hemoagglutination or TPHA. Non-triponemal uh, include RPR, that we are familiar with also. Testing algorithm are uh, uh, comprised by triponemal and non triponemal test. But in uh, li uh, countries with limited resources, point of care tests or rapid tests or bedside tests are used as screening and uh, diagnostic tests. tests. Staging of the adult syphilis is based on clinical manifestation. Staging um, is clinically important as it impacts the treatment regimen and the risk of vertical transmission. Each stage has characteristics not altered by pregnancy. These stages can be overlapping. They comprise uh, primary, secondary, latent, tertiary and uh, neurosyphilis. The primary stage is uh, characterized by a painless shank at the site of infection with sometimes regional lymphadenopathy. This shank is, um, can be genital or exogenital. When it's genital in parts, um, at, uh, for instance, the cervix or the vagina, they can be missed or uh, unnoticed. The secondary uh, syphilis, um, up to six months later, is characterized by disseminated rash, but mainly in the palma and soul area, the plantar area, and sometimes generalized lymphadenopathy. Then it evolves to latent syphilis, which is by definition asymptomatic phase. This phase can uh, evolve in uh, three ways either go back to secondary syphilis or tertiary syphilis or no complications at all. 
treatment of uh, this infection is um, uh, this infection is treated by penicillin as a gold standard uh, treatment in both pregnant and non-pregnant. Uh, up to date, there is no clinically uh, relevant penicillin resistant strain of Treponema pallidum that has been identified. Penicillin in pregnancy is effective in treating maternal disease, preventing transmission to the fetus, and treating established fatal disease. Benzatine penicillin G, 2.4 million unit intramuscular is given. A single dose is sufficient for early and complicated syphilis. However, we give three doses for latent, disease of unknown duration, or tertiary disease. Penicillin allergy is reported by uh, 5 to 10 percent pregnant women. However, serious allergic reaction um, is very rare. WHO uh, recommend desensitization for penicillin uh, allergic patients followed by penicillin therapy. Because the use of non penicillin regimen are either contraindicated, lack of sufficient data on efficacy, or do not cross the placenta barrier completely, so the fetus is not treated properly. Therefore, this uh, alternative are not recommended for pregnant women. However, this should be uh, considered when penicillin cannot be obtained or penicillin allergic patient for uh, penicillin, penicillin allergic patient when penicillin desensitization is not possible. In these cases, infants uh, born to this patient should receive 10 to 15 days course of penicillin. This treatment um, can have potential complications known as jarish herxheimer reaction. It's an acute febrile, febrile, febrile reaction accompanied by headache, myalgia, rash, and hypotension. This reaction typically uh, begins one to two hours after treatment, peaks at eight hours, and resolves within 24 to 48 hours. This reaction results from the release of large amount of spirochet cells product from dying um, uh, spirochet and increase in circulating cytokine levels like tumor necrosis factor or interleukins. Management of this is uh, mainly supportive care with antipyretics and IV fluid. The jarish herxheimer reaction may precipitate uterine contraction, leading to preterm labor and non-reassuring CTG in women treated in second half of pregnancy. The follow-up of uh, women treated uh, with the penicillin should be done by uh, measuring titers. This titer should be checked at the time of treatment to establish a baseline against which to monitor response to treatment. Because the titer might differ from that of the initial treat test, uh, the initial diagnosis test due to the elapsed time between diagnosis and initiation of therapy. RPR uh, or non-treponemal test is preferred. When we have fourfold increase in the non treponema titer after treatment, this is evidence of treatment failure. When we have fourfold decline in the titers, this is considered, uh, considered as acceptable response for, uh, to therapy. When there is a seroconversion um, or change in the uh, status like from positive to negative over time in a patient who has been treated. This is considered uh, consistent with clinical cure. There is a wide patient-to-patient uh, -patient variability in the rate of decline in non-treponemal titers. This variability is influenced by factors such as previous episode of syphilis, HIV status, 
stage of syphilis and level of titer at the time of diagnosis. If the titer, uh, the diagnostic titer is low, it's common for the rate to decline to uh, uh, slower than uh, when the titer is high. The fall in maternal titers does not guarantee that the fetus has been treated adequately. Therefore, neonates should be evaluated for congenital syphilis after delivery. Screening. Um, universal antepartum screening is recommended by the WHO. All pregnant uh, women should be screened at first prenatal encounter. Then women at risk, at, risk, uh, at high risk of infection, uh, uh, screening should be repeated between 28 to 32 weeks and at delivery. In South Africa, currently we uh, do testing at booking and at 28 to 32 weeks. For women who have not been screened in pregnancy and who deliver a stillborn after 20 weeks of gestation, Screening should be done at delivery. Vertical transmission. Um, transmission to the fetus uh, results from inadequate maternal screening and or inadequate maternal treatment. Screening failures occur primarily among unbooked late bookers or high-risk patients non-rescreened in the third trimester or at delivery. Um, this is very uh, important because um, surveys done have shown that although 88% of pregnant women globally have had at least one ANC visit, among syphilis-infected mothers, only 51% of those who had ANC were adequately treated. And among women who had ANC visit undiagnosed or diagnosed but untreated accounted for 74% of the global congenital syphilis burden. So we have uh, obstacles not only for the screening but when screened the importance is not stress on appropriate uh, treatment. Fatal infection is suspected if characteristics findings on ultrasound after 20 weeks of gestation in untreated uh, patient or inadequately treated patient are found. Uh, these are hepatomegaly and placentomegaly, uh, which are early suggestive sonographic findings. We have also anemia, ascites, high drops, which occur later in the course of fetal infection infection. But an abnormal uh, ultrasound is not diagnostic of fetal infection. And a normal ultrasound does not exclude fetal infection. Maternal penicillin, penicillin treatment is curative for fetal infection in most of the cases. But maternal treatment of less than 30 days before delivery is known to be a risk factor for congenital infection. Um, Treponema pallidum readily, uh, readily infect the placenta. Then the trans placental transmission to the fetus occurs from around 10 to 9 to 10 weeks of gestation age and at any stage of maternal disease. Fetal uh, Abnormalities result from a robust inflammatory response to treponema pallidum. This is mostly pronounced after 20 weeks since fetal immunological response is poorly developed in the first half of pregnancy. After placenta infection, transplacental passage of pyrochete to the fetal circulation leads to fetal hepatic infection and dysfunction, amniotic fluid infection, fetal hematologic abnormalities such as anemia and thrombocytopenia, ascites, high drops. Vertical transmission also can uh, occur uh, from contact with maternal secretion 
or blood containing uh, spirochet. The factors influencing frequency of vertical transmissions, um, the early stage of syphilis, um, the risk is high in the first four years after maternal acquisition of infection when there is a high load of spirochet in, in the blood. In the blood, and when there is uh, when it, it there's no uh, there's absence of treatment, um, uh, and it's high among uh, women who acquire syphilis during pregnancy. Maternal acquisition of infection um, late rather than early in gestation also it's known to be a risk factor. The baseline uh, title also counts. Um, the risk in patients uh, with a uh, high uh, level of titers is, uh, has been found to be higher than those who have a, 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 a low titer. Potential adverse um, outcomes include miscarriage, preterm birth, stillbirth, impaired fetal growth, congenital infection, and neonatal mortality. Fetal diagnosis, um, fetal infection is suspected if there are characteristic findings on ultrasound examination from 20 weeks of gestation in untreated or inadequately treated patient. Abnormal ultrasound, these abnormal ultrasound are not diagnostic uh, uh, of fetal infection. And also normal ultrasound does not exclude, exclude fetal infection. Some manifestation of congenital disease such as um, uh, ocular and osseous abnormality are subtle and non seen on prenatal ultrasound exam. The definitive diagnosis of fetal infection is made by testing of the amniotic fluid or fetal blood. However, this invasive procedure done to obtain specimens can be associated with complications and they do not change management and therefore they are not recommended. Um, let's talk about treatment failure. Um, Usually, uh, I mean, it's known that uh, maternal penicillin treatment is curative for fetal infection in most of the cases. Although fetal anemia is one of the adverse sequelae um, known, intrauterine transfusion is rarely necessary, as an appropriate treatment of maternal infection generally, generally reverses the anemia. Congenital uh, infection has been diagnosed in uh, up to 2% of offspring of patients adequately treated during pregnancy, compared to 70 to 100% of offspring, uh, offspring of untreated patients. Uh, WHO estimates that um, treatment uh, with penicillin reduce uh, stillbirth by 82%, preterm birth by 65% and the clinical disease by close to 100%. It's been found that characteristic inpatient adequately treated but who went to, on to have congenitally infected infant have this common characteristic. They had high non-treponemal titer, a treatment or delivery, they delivered at less than 36 weeks, they were in early stage of infection, or there was a short interval between treatment and delivery. The hypothesis around this uh, treatment failure is uh, explain, 
explained by high uh, treponema load, altered penicillin pharmacokinetics in pregnancy, and inadequate time for fetal therapeutic response. About fetal monitoring, it, uh, at least one ultrasound exam at more than 20 weeks gestation should be performed to look for those signs of congenital uh, infection. In pregnancy in, uh, with presumptive ultrasound diagnosis of congenital syphilis, then weekly to biweekly ultrasound to assess fetal well-being and the fetal response to uh, penicillin uh, should be uh, carried on. With successful fetal treatment, uh, middle cerebral artery doppler abnormalities, ascites, polyhydramnios, resolve, then the, followed by placentomegaly and lastly hepatomegaly. Hepatomegaly can take months to resolve after maternal treatment. Um, when is delivery indicated? Um, late preterm delivery for neonate uh, treatment is warranted when there is high risk of fetal uh, treatment failure. So if a progressive worsening signs of congenital syphilis on ultrasounds are seen or high drops do not improve, delivery is indicated. At delivery, pediatrician should be notified about maternal syphilis stage treatment and fatal ultrasound findings. Placental and fatal membrane should be sent uh, for histology examination and pathology, uh, pathologists should be uh, notified about maternal syphilis stage and treatment. In conclusion, syphilis remains an important health concern among women despite the availability of effective and inexpensive therapy. The failure to detect or adequately treat maternal disease often results in serious sequelae for the fetus and neonates. Penicillin desensitization is indicated for infected pregnant women with documented penicillin allergy. Penicillin is effective for treating maternal disease, preventing transmission to the fetus, and treating established fetal disease. Patients treated should have their uh, title checked just before treatment, and treatment less than 30 days before delivery it's, is a risk factor for congenital infection. If treatment failure is suspected or proof of an appropriate treatment regimen cannot be verified, then a full dose of penicillin, a full three dose of penicillin regimen should be readministered. Point of care testing or bedside testing or same day and same day treatment is effective in antenatal settings where loss to follow up for tests and result is common. Thank you very much for listening.